Hey guys, it's Tyler from Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the Corsair Vengeance 12GB kit. Uh, it's 3 times 4 gigabyte sticks. Uh, obviously it's designed for X58. Uh, the sticks are 1600 MHz and they're 999 24 time in stock out the box. Uh, this is quite a, uh, a bit of a strange video really because Corsair just basically said to me, right, you want to do a video and can you do it quick? So it was just like, of course I can. Um, so yes, uh, basically uh, what I'm going to do with the video today is I'm just going to show you a couple of benchmarks. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to keep the uh, RAM at stock speed and see how tight we can get the times. And then I'm also going to raise the overclocks and see how far we can push. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is show you a good look around the sticks quickly and give you an up close look. Right then, let's have a good up close look at the Vengeance. You can see the uh, green PCB poking out there. Now the uh, heat sinks, as you can see there, are very thin aluminium. I hope the camera will pick it up, but it is very thin aluminium as well. Uh, the heat sinks are probably more for looks than anything else, because they don't get massively hot. Obviously, where they are quite tall, the PCB ends about here. They are quite tall, it won't fit with the larger twin tower coolers like the um, D14 and the Silver Arrow so you're going to have to go careful with your heat sink choices but if you do want them they do just unclip and you could change the heat sinks if you wish but obviously that's going to void your warranty so spin it over and you can see the back but pretty much that's it guys Yeah, that's your up close look at the Vengeance. Right, okay, you've seen the times, uh, the times. <laughs> you've seen the uh, RAM up close. And uh, basically, I've just run some stock tests. This is memory bandwidth in Sandra. And it's saying that there's 26.62 gigabytes a second bandwidth. On these sticks and this is the IDA 64 um, benchmark and it's basically saying there's 16,081 megabits a second on read, 13,433 megabits a second on write and 18,987 megabits a second on copy and then a 52.7 uh, nanosecond um, latency so what I'm going to do quickly is just show you CPU Z screen to show you the CPU Z stock, which is basically the RAM has just been set up by XMP. And if we go into memory, you can see it's 999 24 1T. Um, it's literally just straight out of the box memory running at stock with a stock CPU. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is uh, tighten the timings up and see what we we can get. Right then my lovelies, keeping the memory at uh, 1600 megahertz and also at the stock voltage of 1.5 volts. We've managed to get the um, times down to 78724 from 999. So quite an impressive drop there without any voltage increase. Now where it's just a timing change, the read, write and copy is roughly the same. But it has taken... A good chunk off of the latency the only thing I did find quite strange is by making those changes the uh, Sandra memory bandwidth 
has dropped from 26 to 20. But when I've been using the PC and doing bits and bobs on it, doing the other benchmarks, this is the only one that uh, has shown that change, which is one of the reasons why I decided to show you in the video. But again, 78724, that's with everything else at stock. Now what I'm going to do now is we're going to see about the uh, maximum overclock that we can achieve. Right then guys, just want to show you the overclock quickly. Uh, I found the best balance was uh, with the uh, BCLK at 200, which then allowed me to set the memory to 2000. So running at 2 gigahertz, and uh, all I needed to do timing wise was change one timing to 10 from 9 to 10. Uh, and the memory voltage I upped from 1.5 to 1.6. So we've now got a uh, the memory's now running at 2000, so a perfect tie in for a 4 gigahertz overclock. Now got 19,893 on the read. 17,271 on the right, 23,263 on the copy. Latency is still very low at 43.3 nanoseconds. And on Sandra, the bandwidth has gone up to 32.78 gigabytes a second. So some very impressive scores there. Uh, so now let's uh, pop you back on the tripod and we'll get this video wrapped up. Right then guys, uh, this is time for me to round up and do my chitty chatty bit really. Uh, and I want to start by kind of explaining that back in the days every time that we got a bigger um, capacity stick, so like from the example from the move up from 512 sticks to 1 gigabyte stick, st sticks, and then one gigabyte to two gigabyte, and uh, obviously now we're you know we're on the kind of transition period. Four gigabyte sticks have been around for a little while, but they were immensely expensive. And uh, the Vengeance 12 gigabyte kit can be had for in the UK for around 150 quid mark. You know, some places are going to be a little bit more expensive, some places are going to have offers. It's always worth shopping about. But an immensely good value kit when you think about it. Now, to be perfectly frank, uh, a, a kit like this, 12 gigabyte, 150 quid, 1600 megahertz, that's not a bad price, do you know what I mean, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and it's also from a well known brand with uh, good customer care and stuff like that. So there's, there's lots of factors, even at its stock, would make it a good buy. But the fact that you can tighten those times down from 999 down to 787 is, is brilliant really because as I was trying to explain before with the 4 gigabyte sticks, especially when they first come out they weren't really overclocking the speeds were always quite low as well most of them when they were first released were kind of like 13, 33 megahertz and the 1600 megahertz ones at one point were very very expensive sticks um, and something that we noticed in the past, that, that trying to get the 1600 megahertz sticks up to 2000, but sometimes they needed immensely slack times, sort of like 11s and 12s, um, and they didn't really get to 2000 at all. Now the fact that the, the Corsair sticks are native at 1.5 as well is quite an achievement, because uh, quite a lot of the other kits are all 1.65 volts. So the run at 1.5 volts, you can tighten the times down from 999 down to 787, or at least you can with my kit and my configuration. And obviously this is, as with everything with this, you do need to know about your BIOS and how to go in and play. And you, it's not necessarily just as simple as going bish bash bosh because the matey in the review said so. You've got to learn what your rig's doing, which is why I never give out all of my settings, because I'd rather kind of help you learn to do it yourself than just give you an easy answer. But anyway, slightly off topic. Uh, so we got it down 787 at um, stock volts at the stock speed, but then we, I wanted to push upwards. Now I got 2000 with a 200 times 20 um, clock on the CPU. I, I could actually get up 
uh, to 2100, but because of that, my chip doesn't do 210 base clock, so I couldn't use the 10 multi. It was all um, I was having to use a lower BCLK to then use the multiplier up another notch. And to be perfectly frank, I my views on it are: if you can get 200 base on your CPU, then that gives you the option of 1600 or 2000 megahertz memory, depending on what you have. Um, uh, the 200 bus is lovely because then obviously you can use your multiplier and you can go 3.6, 3.8, 4, 4.2, 4.4 and you can go up like that. So I personally always aim for 200 bus because it works so well with everything else. Uh, I've recently helped um, uh, one of my mates on MSN. He's on a 200 base for a 3.6 gigahertz overclock running just 1.1 volts um, on a 930. Um, but it's because he then uh, has got a very fast bus time, he's got his RAM all tied in lovely, the voltages are down really low, but that's what he wanted. I always go kind of 4 plus. But anyway, these uh, RAM sticks for a 4 gigabyte kit to do 9, 10, 9, 24, you only have to change one thing at 1.6 volts. So we've not even gone up to ATX spec 1.65. Um, and still be able to hit that uh, 2000 barrier is it's a heck of an achievement really there's not a lot of kits out there that are able to do this and most of the ones that do you're going to be paying a lot more for them so they're a very good value as well um, I'd say they're perfect for uh, uh, the system you know what I mean if you're building yourself an x58 system or something like that the only drawback as uh, as far as I'm concerned is the size of the heat sinks on the RAM because they're that little bit too big that you can't run them yes I know with a D14 like I always say about but at the same time you can't use it with um, a Silver Arrow and there's quite a lot of other heat sinks out there that they won't work with because of the height um, but they do unclip quite easily and to be perfectly frank if I was going to buy these I would probably whip the heat sinks off fit something smaller and then just run the D14 anyway um, and because RAM heat sinks, they don't need to be that big. It's literally all for aesthetics. And as far as RAM coolers are concerned as well, unless you're you know looking to break world records um, or you're running mem tests for seven days at a time, uh, you're never ever really going to need a, a RAM cooler either. So yeah, I would be uh, my position on it would be to get some decent small heat sinks, uh, get all that in there. Uh, and then you know run a decent overclock with a nice quiet cooler or you know whatever one that you choose to do. Obviously, if you're using water cooling, you're not going to have any problems at all. Um, but yes, uh, at the end of the day, the Corsair Vengeance kit. I'm really glad I uh, give these a good look. And uh, many of you may be asking why I'm running this in the uh, what I would call my heatsink test rig, and it's just because it was easier for me to uh, drop the. Um, super mega back in this to do the testing with and it was for me to strip everything off of my main test bench but obviously we're using the same CPU or another 950 uh, and the same kind of clocks anyway so it's, it doesn't really make a massive amount of difference but I should stop going round and round in circles would I tell you to buy a vengeance kit if the heat sinks aren't going to matter to you uh, you know for whatever cooling option that you've got and you would like a 12 gigabyte kit, I would say that the uh, Vengeance kit, because of the price, should be very, very high, if not top of your list of RAM to consider. Uh, and because of the uh, overclocking performance, the fact that they are 1.5 volt, and the price, I would also go as far to say as I would give these a Overclock 3D Gold Award as well, uh, and a very well deserved Gold Award at that. Um, Definitely a, a, a brilliant kit, but I just, I really do wish Corsair had gone for the uh, slightly smaller heat sinks and not really, because uh, these those heat sinks have pretty much been made for noobs that think that they need massive heat sinks. Uh, and I, there are a lot of us out there now that are uh, a little bit more worldwide, know that we don't need those massive heat sinks, uh, and it would have made our lives a heck of a lot easier if they just made them a bit smaller. Uh, like, for argument's sake, the uh, G-Skill Ripjaw X's because the uh, PCB sizes on both ramps are the same. 
only the cooler sizes are different. So uh, yeah, I would definitely like Corsair to have a little bit of a think uh, and try and make the uh, heatsink sizes. But that, to be perfectly frank, is my only criticism that I can find with these. Um, so yeah, a big thumbs up to Corsair and a much deserved gold award. So, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you and there are going to be quite a few more this week. Oh, if you have sat to the end as well, you must have liked the video, subscribe and comment because we do like to hear your feedback and I do like an extra subscriber as well. This is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you all. Out.